Hi, this is Lou with Meter Builder. Today we're going to calibrate a bird line section. I'll be calibrating the, uh, the slugs you see here up to a thousand watts and if you look at the website you'll see a couple of articles can indeed be used at higher power ratings uh, than their nominal value. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to go ahead and calibrate this on coupler 4 as well. So I have the coupler menu selected on line 4. Let me go ahead and hit the setup button. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'll select coupler 4. I'll erase the previous settings, which is the first menu button. And I'll select power. Here's where we need to be a little bit careful with the bird elements. The bird elements put out a relatively uh, low voltage. They're designed to drive a 30 microamp meter, normally when full scale power is applied. They're applying only millivolts across the, uh, the meter movement. But if you disconnect the, um, the bird slugs from the meter movement, and that's the case we have here, where we're using a line section, the bird slugs are feeding into a high impedance, which is uh, roughly 300K that MB1 presents. We can get approximately a, a volt and a half. It's, uh, it's documented on the website what the curve is in the, in the open circuit condition. And that will limit somewhat the resolution that we'll be able to attain with the bird element, but we still should be able to do a pretty reasonable job. Okay. This time I'm using the LP100 as a reference. Again, any accurate reference can be used. And you can see that we're not able to get with 1,000 watts, we're not able to get all the way up to uh, 30,000. But as in the case of the Radio Shack coupler, we couldn't quite get up to 30,000, even though we got a little bit closer. We'll have to live with that value, but we'll go ahead and do the calibration and, and see how good a job it, it does. Is this an OEM coupler? No. We'll use 80 meters as the reference band and we'll set this up for a thousand watts full scale. Let's select that and now it's asking us to go ahead and uh, start the calibration. One thing you'll find is if your coupler is not quite that sensitive, doesn't put out a uh, uh, sensitivity being defined as the DC output voltage uh, per watt, for the very low power values, uh, the voltage might not be adequate to generate enough voltage for the MB1 to do an accurate calibration. So we're starting at 0.1 watts instead of 0.05. Okay, if you see there, no input. Va uh, value ignored. What it's basically telling us is that the voltage is not high enough at 0.1 watts uh, with this coupler, with the bird line sections, to read that calibration point. So we'll move up to 0.2. Okay, let's try 0.2, see if it can read that. Okay. Uh, it's able to read point two, so we can proceed with uh, with higher powers. Let me let me try to go up to point five. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's reading somewhere between point four nine, uh, actually point four eight. So let me go ahead and hit a save. And as with the other couplers, I'll do the remainder of, of the calibration points, so with the exception of the last point offline. Okay, we're at the last calibration point, 1000 watts. And that's uh, pretty close. Uh, maybe slightly less than. Let's see if I can get a little closer there. All right, we'll call that a thousand, thousand watts, and we'll save that. 
Okay, I hit the next to proceed to the next screen. Again, the purpose of this just to give me an opportunity to back up if I wanted to go to a previous point. So I'll hit next. We'll skip the frequency uh, compensation. We'll save the settings to EE Prom. Okay, and now we're, we're all set to do some AB comparisons. Okay, now we'll do some AB comparisons. We'll just dial uh, some random power, <clears throat> let it sit there for a while. This is instantane power on the MB1, and this is what the LP100 is reading. And again, I've gotten some comments that I'm not leaving it there long enough, so I'll let things stabilize for a while. On the low levels, we know we're going to run into some problems. Okay, at, at above 0.4, it, it's, it's not too bad, actually. But certainly uh, above a couple of, couple of watts, we're in pretty good shape. And again, if you find a, a range like uh, between 50 and 100, where the accuracy is not quite what you want, you can go back and tweak it. Because as you see, sometimes your reference moves around a little bit, and you're basically making an educated guess as to uh, what the power is. Now, no, let me put the amplifier on for some higher power. And as you see, the, uh, the MB1 is capable of measuring above the highest calibration point it was calibrated at. And one thing you may notice, if you look at this light, if you watch when I change power, that'll go off and come on. And when that's on, that's, uh, that's the MB1 uh, indicating that it recognizes that there's a steady state signal and it kicks in the... Uh, high order digital filtering and you see that the stability well, let's see how good the repeatability is you see that the repeatability and the stability is pretty good because of the digital filtering and again when this lights off it's either detected a change or you're in a um, you're in a time varying signal such as CW or uh, or voice so we're showing to a certain extent the value of the uh, of the digital filtering again let me just go through a few other high power choices there I mean, it's pretty good it's not quite as close as the match we had when we uh, use the inexpensive coupler to match with the alpha but part of that part of that is due to um, the fact that we're dealing with with these slugs that have uh, limited sensitivity but we've shown that even <clears throat> even in a case where the full scale voltage is in the order of a volt and MB1 likes to see 6.14 volts for for best resolution in fact if you have a couple of greater than that you have to use the trim pot to crank down the uh, uh, the input to prevent saturation but even in a case like this where we have uh, limited voltage full scale voltage we can still do a, a reasonable job and, and that's in part because of uh, MB1's 15-bit calibration and uh, if you look at the web page you'll see that the bird coupler does not come close to following the square law relationship 
So here's a case where uh, MB1's multiple uh, calibration point routine uh, was advantageous. And let me just show you something here. This, let me just zoom in and show you the uh, the actual calibration table for uh, for couple of four. Okay, we calibrated 28 points. And as you can see, we, we concentrated on the low end. But you can see here, when we got to 200, 500, and 1,000, between 500 and 1,000, we could have calibrated at multiple points. But because we had characterized this coupler separately, and it's shown on the web page, we knew that the uh, coupler was following the uh, square law curve. Now, you, you won't know that in general, but because of that, we were able to, uh, to not have to pick a lot of uh, points at the high power range. And uh, the number of points that you select for a couple of calibration does not impact the performance. If you have a, uh, a regular bird meter, uh, we have instructions on the website on how to modify that. And you can use that in the same mode as you use a regular bird. You can just flip the... <laughs> flip the bird. You can uh, you can flip the slug to measure uh, forward power and reflected power, and of course you'll always be using the uh, uh, the forward power uh, uh, indicator there. But again, that's normal uh, single meter bird operation. So you, you can go ahead and use a single bird meter if you want. If you have two bird meters, you certainly can put. Uh, a slug in each and put them in tandem and you, you effectively have a dual line section. I used the 100 watt slug and the 25 watt slugs uh, for, for reflected. You want reflected to be as sensitive as you can. Uh, surprisingly the 25 watt slug wasn't really much much more sensitive than the, uh, the 100 watt slugs but a um, 100 watt slug is probably a good choice for the uh, for the normal power range is 0 to 1500 watts that uh, that we use. There's just a couple of other points I want to make. This is not an accuracy test. All we've been checking in the, in the several videos we've put together is the ability of MB1 to track a, uh, a given reference. Now the measurements you've seen today on the bird are only using about roughly one-fifth of the dynamic range of MB1's input. The MB1 coupler uh, drives uh, drives its output voltage way beyond that 6.14 volt limit. So couplers like the MB1 coupler uh, take full advantage of MB1's dynamic range. The point with accuracy then is if MB1 is calibrated with a using a coupler that takes advantage of its full dynamic range and uses an accurate reference it has the potential of being the uh, most accurate meter on the market. So that's the point we tried to make on the web page as well. And the topic of accuracy will be the subject of, a, of an upcoming video. And even though we've shown pretty good tracking between MB1 and our reference, in this case the LP100, with the uh, bird elements. If, if one had an application, uh, either power measurements or what we call generic meter applications, where you needed the maximum accuracy and resolution, in a case like this, one could add a uh, single rail op amp with maybe a gain of uh, four or five, and that would drive the MB1 to its full input range. all you can as we've shown here you can use a, uh, a single element at least the forward power element 100 watts to gain uh, good accuracy and resolution over a wide dynamic range uh, in this case 0 to 1000 watts so you certainly can get by with a smaller number of slugs and in fact with MB1's uh, band correction this HF slug could actually be used for six meters and so you, you actually have the ability to stretch the frequency which the slugs support. And last but not least, you can take advantage of MB1's feature set. The alarm, a full array of display devices, the min-max function, the digital filtering, 
and uh, all of the other features, uh, many of which are unique to uh, Meter Builder. So, of course, this is a sales pitch, but I hope it gives you a few ideas as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, you can reach us at support at meterbuilder.com. And thanks again for dropping by.